Today in the crypto space, we see the market slightly green. Bitcoin above that $27,000 and Ethereum up approximately 1% above that $1,800 mark. The rest of the crypto space, the altcoins are pretty much a mix of green and red. There's some indecision happening in this market and it's all because of Bitcoin hesitating at this current level. In today's video, I wanna talk about the general market. I wanna use Bitcoin as a leading indicator, but I have one project that I wanna to talk to you about. It is part of a very, very bullish narrative. And of course, bullish projects deserve our attention, especially upon retracements. And that project is called Conflux. CFX is the ticker so you know what let's talk about the news let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize welcome to the channel my name is mike and let's get right into it guys if you're new to the channel special welcome on the channel we talk about cryptocurrency bitcoin ethereum and all the altcoins looking for opportunities whether we go up or down bearish or bullish it doesn't matter we want to stay one step ahead of the market and be prepared for any of that volatility so that we can make those gains if you appreciate the strategy do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos including the live streams at 7 30 east where we talk about crypto news and price action in today's video we're going to talk about bitcoin we're going to look at the general market we're going to look at the overall opportunities that this market has and guys if you appreciate that make sure that you support the channel by slapping that like button of course it does really help out with the algorithm and you can join and follow me on all those socials the links are in the description um join the telegram group definitely posting alpha throughout the day there and the, the community is looking for some growth in that avenue so make sure that you join us there and of course tonight at 7 30 eastern we're going to be talking about crypto news and price action if you have any projects that you want me to cover on the channel that's a great place and time to um, request them live and we'll pull up some charts come up with strategies of course today we'll look at bitcoin as a leading indicator we'll take a look at this general market to see if we can get an edge or just to see the overall sentiment in the market and then we'll talk about conflux cfx such a bullish project of course coming out of that narrative coming out of asia and something that we definitely need to consider because you know as the time ticks uh, we know that you know basically hong kong is going to be going hot very soon with regards to cryptocurrency and then we we need to make sure that our um, portfolios are aligned accordingly okay so we're going to talk about all of that very very soon let's continue by looking at this general market what is happening today with bitcoin hitting the top of the range still very very range bound okay i know a lot of traders out there right now i've been you know uh, basically bouncing around social media and there's a lot of traders saying you know go long go short and for me um i, I basically um, it's a no trade zone for me it's been no trade zone for the last little while with bitcoin sideways planking sideways and yes i could get into lower time frames you know increase the leverage and start scalping you know the range but for me based on my strategy i rather invest in my time in other th avenues and other opportunities within the crypto space and for me that works out right i don't want to get into a very you know volatile low time frame risky scenario i rather just wait dollar cost average into some projects that retrace and buy the dip okay so that for me is the strategy currently now of course we're going to try to stay one step ahead and anticipate any movement but Bitcoin right now showing me that we're still within this range leads me to believe that, you know, either we're going to continue within this range or we're going to see a, a crack very soon. It's been bouncing around for the last little while. Ethereum getting a little bit of strength. Just um, looking at the charts, it looks a bit stronger than Bitcoin. So we'll take a look at Bitcoin, of course. And tonight we'll take a look at Ethereum. I'm going to get a list going here. Um, Ethereum right now is on the top of the list. I want to take a look at Ethereum. We'll take a look at 730 Eastern. Um, when we go live we'll take a look at that one bnb top of the range as well xrp looking a little bit rounded top maybe getting a dip it would be healthy if, if if there are any doubts um with the bulls here on the xrp um coming down to lower levels to get a, a cheaper price would basically give us that confirmation that there is no doubt we're just looking for lower levels and you know maybe getting into a better risk to reward ratio and the bulls might come right back in so we got to look at xrp uh for a potential dip here very very possible cardano looking strong getting a nice little bounce but nothing crazy nothing crazy lido going a little bit higher there looking good polygon top of the range guys i was thinking about making the video today about polygon as a large cap project obviously there's a lot of individuals always talking about it 
you know there's it's a, one of the most popular projects out there but with that being said for me um, polygon you know has always been a great performer um it's performing very very strong um in fact in this whole bear market the retracement wasn't even that deep but nonetheless polygon has a, a lot of work to do in the next bull run has a lot of work to do the ecosystem needs to grow we need some real growth in the ecosystem although the actual solution the actual blockchain is really bullish we need polygon to take it to the next level we're going to see um, a continuation of its growth that's the whole thing as a large cap token the utility behind matic needs to be there or else eventually it will fizzle away okay so something to consider there solana getting a bit of support here at the bottom of the range tron maybe maybe looking for that retracement it looks a bit bearish at the top i'm going to put tron at the top uh, on our list for this evening because i feel like if you are in a long position you be, should be taking some profits and maybe even entering a short maybe to hedge against any dips um yeah let's continue here what else do we have litecoin going sideways polka dot going sideways litecoin has been doing pretty good and with the sideways consolidation it could be an indication that maybe we're consolidating for another leg up or finally retracing it could be possible uh sheep getting another move to the upside avax pulling back just a little bit i'm bullish on avax yesterday's video on avax was a, a great one it was a good one go check that one out we cover uh, projects every day we go live pretty much every day um and we look for opportunities avax is definitely one of those that you know at the bottom of the range could give us an edge for a pump up so don't sleep on avax make sure that you have a little bit of a bag just in case if you're super bullish of course dca at the bottom of the range we have chain link at the bottom of the range as well we have uniswap pulling back to lower levels some good retracements overall ton coin waking up yesterday i wanted to talk about ton coin but we didn't make it you know those requests were coming in and we didn't make it but it was at a good buy the dip opportunity today in the last 24 hours it's up 6.2 percent pretty good game pretty good bounce for ton coin what else do we have anything interesting filecoin range bound as well i like filecoin i'm expecting it to wake up apecoin you know trying to reach those higher levels but the rest if you look at these right here they're pretty much carbon copy uh you know replicas of one another not really doing anything you know near protocol h bar like all these are pretty much sideways nothing crazy um render of course render up another 10 11 percent for today but you know guys render is a beast resident render is a beast it's holding up really strong um i don't know when the party is going to be over okay i took more profits today full disclosure taking profits is on the agenda for myself with, with regards to render i am bullish through and through but I, I am not going to give back my profits to the market i am going to be take them off the table and i've been taking profits along the way to the point that now it, officially i am out of short-term spot position uh, profit taking opportunities i'm gonna have to dabble into my long-term um bag if i want to take more profits and you know what i may i may i just may you know it, it's been rallying up really hard while the market is going stagnant that leads me to believe that eventually render it needs to cool off it needs to cool off okay so the party will be over soon the question is when and i'm not saying forever i'm just saying we're waiting for a pullback on render it needs to happen it happens all the time and i will be buying my positions back even harder upon a retracement so i'm just waiting patiently because i'm a bull through and through on especially on render but when you see the price action rally up this hard 37 percent in the last week and then what about the previous week to that keep on going up and up and up it's time to consider de-risking for sure here guys so take those profits off the top make sure that you protect your capital including your gains let's continue here we see more sideways range bound price action Ave getting a little bit of a pump elron still grinding to the downside nothing really interesting there the central land uh dipping down to those lower levels then synthetics maybe looking for that breakout to the upside BitDAO also breaking to the upside, looking good. Neo, 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 that Asia narrative. It's definitely about that Asia narrative. Neo is really hot right now, up approximately 11% in the last seven days, looking pretty good. And of course, the project for today, the one that I want to focus on is CFX. We'll take a look at the CFX chart. We'll go t uh, check out the uh, tokenomics. We'll go on the website. We'll do the full nine yards here on CFX and um, see what we can come up with. Kava reaching those higher levels. I'm taking profits off the top 7.6%. Really good. 
75 uh, 25% in the last seven days. I'm looking for profit taking for sure throughout the market. This is an opportunity to take a little bit of profit. In fact, I'm going to put this on the list to make sure that my portfolio took some profits. I want to make sure about that one because it looks great. 25%, 26% gains. Um, yeah, I'm taking profit. What else do we have here? Injective at 12% in the last seven days, looking good. But again, a retracement could be healthy here for injective. Definitely healthy. Um, IOTA looking strong, 3.4% to the upside. It could be another profit-taking scenario. What else do we have? He'll be rallying up based on that Asian narrative. It could be. I think they re um, they re uh, relocated. They relocated to Hong Kong, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's an interesting concept. You know, maybe the 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 Huel Boy um, exchange might have a really strong future going forward. Something to consider. Okay, guys. So general consensus for me here on the market is, you know, we're pretty sideways with some random pumps to the upside, which is absolutely normal. Um, and of course, as, as a leading indicator, Bitcoin is not doing much, giving us a very little edge, right? When we see Bitcoin rally up at 1%, all coins rally up a little bit heavier, maybe 5% max. And then, you know, depending on the uh, on, on the situation, on the market cap. But overall, the consensus is that we're pretty much going sideways. Stay tuned for uh, the live stream in, uh, for tonight. We're going to go on the second page. We're going to lower cap projects. We'll kind of dig around and see if we can find any other opportunities. But for now, I think this is good. All right, guys, I know you're here to talk about charts. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin looking like right now? First, we'll take a look at Bitcoin and then we'll get into the CFX charts. We'll go check out their website. We'll go check out what it's been up to. But at the end of the day, Bitcoin as a leading indicator can give us an idea of what we could expect for the rest of the market. Bitcoin right now is still going sideways. All right, guys, let's get into a little bit of detail here. And we'll take a look at Bitcoin right now is pretty much going sideways. It's nothing really interesting, right? On the daily time frame, it could be a, a, a pennant, a continuation pattern. It could be. It could be a beginning of a, a, a potential Bart Simpson, inverse Bart Simpson pattern. What we might go sideways here for the next little while. Look at the volume. Just pretty stagnant. We can go sideways for the next little while and get a nice pop to the upside. And then finally, maybe get a, a decent retracement. It could be like, you know, my big picture, right? I always talk about it on the channel. Big picture is that we finally need to come down. We eventually we need to come down and confirm this as the low. There is no confirmation just yet that this is the low. OK, so we need a confirmation low. We need to come down and create a higher low uh, based out of this bullish divergence. We got that price action to the upside. Now we need to come down and confirm it as the low and get that follow through. And then we will definitely start scaling in and buying the dip here upon that retracement. But as of yet, for me, I'm very skeptical. I'm, you know, taking profits off the top, especially on Bitcoin. I took two good uh, sell orders, took two profit um, orders right here. And I'm waiting, very patient, very patient because we could get another leg up and maybe we could get it to higher levels, maybe about 32 or we can double top or we can create a lower high, whatever the case may be. For me right now, it's really risky to get into fresh longs on Bitcoin, especially if you're not willing to take profits really quickly. OK, so basically for a short term scalp to the upside, I would be down for that, but not long term hold or a super long term hold. Fine, but a mid term hold. No, I would be waiting for a retracement coming down to these levels anywhere upon a retracement, golden pocket, 786, whatever it is, and start DCing. Let's see what the four hour is showing us. Um, and we'll look at these momentum oscillators out, see what's happening. We did fully reset here. We're slowly getting to the upside. We're almost reset upon this price action too. We're almost reset. Reset. We're creating a, are we going to get a, a, um, a lower high on this, uh, on the momentum oscillator? It could be possible, guys. Could be very possible that we do get a little bit of a pop up. In fact, let's go back to the daily quickly and see what's happening. Big picture. We're still grinding to the downside regarding uh, the RSI. The MACD is looking slightly bullish here. You got to admit here on the daily. My biggest fear here is that we're going to do one of these. We're going to do one of these. A little cluster of green and then continue down. Now, it doesn't have to happen. Based on the trend, every time we break up, we break up pretty strong, break up pretty strong. But what does that mean relative to price? Let's go see. Every time we broke to the upside, we broke up. Hold on. Breaking up means hitting these tops, breaking up this top, breaking up, 
are we going to make another top right around here? And if you've been following the channel, I always said that if we come to this level, if we get to this zone right here at about $28,670, give or take, I would be considering entering a short position. Why? Because at that point, we're going to officially start creating a very rounded scenario here on this top, if it is a top, and creating a confirm another confirmation high of another lower high will just put another layer of confluence and confidence in my trading strategy and to suggest, you know what, this is a downward sloping wedge or a downward sloping triangle, a descending triangle that eventually should break down bearish. Okay, so we got to be aware of that. A quick little pop, a rejection, and maybe coming back down. And really, my basis right now is that the RSI is still kind of trending to the downside, despite this bearish, uh, this rally up. This is bearish divergence, follow through price action. Now we got to be careful here. We got to be very careful because to form a pivot point right here, we also should come back up and test this again. It could happen. So confirmation high, test it. Let's create a, a lower high and then come back down for a full on breakdown. Okay, so it could take time to build up here. It doesn't have to happen in one straight go. We need that end pattern. We need a confirmation high the same way we need a confirmation low in at this bottom right here. So two perspectives. This is a longer term perspective. This is a shorter term perspective. In the short term, confirmation high, maybe reversal, and then a longer term perspective, confirmation low for further continuation to the upside, you know, bull market style, waiting for that bull market, in, in, you know, to, to begin. So it, obviously it's going to take time. If we go back up here and pattern, f come back down, you know what I mean? And it, you're going to have months will go by months. The summer will probably end by the time, you know, we actually see some real confirmations um, on this bottom, right? A real confirmation would mean a back test. Okay. So that's my take here on Bitcoin. Nice and slow. Let's see what happens. You know, I'm, you know, I'm slightly bullish in a way. Because, of course, an M pattern would be great, an M pattern of some sort, even if it's a higher high with bullish divergence on the daily, even on the you know higher time frames would be great. But here on the four hour, you know, I feel like it's faking us out at every opportunity. Look, like every opportunity we're getting faked out. We were slowly consolidating here on the four hour time frame and we finally broke to the upside. Now, could this be that fake out? Could this be a fake out where we finally, you know, maybe we do get a little bit of a rally up, but the bears take control and bring it right back down. It could be the case, right? So this is why, and from a bullish perspective, how high could we really go before we hit absolute resistance? We have this trend line and we have this trend line. This zone right here is the absolutely most bearish or most resistive spot on this chart right now. This is where we're going to get the resistance. So for me, is it a risk to war ratio that I'm willing to get into right now? Not quite, not quite. So that's my take on Bitcoin. If it goes up, I'll short it. If it comes down, let's see what happens. Because if we break below some critical levels, it could be a scenario where we'll fall below that 25,000. And then upon a back test, I'll be shorting it anyway. So right now, taking it easy, seeing what unfolds here. I'm in a slightly bearish bias, okay? But I wouldn't mind longing to this trend line, right? With a bit of leverage, like, you know, if you think about it, if we do get a pop up, you're looking at 5% to the upside with a 5X leverage at minimum, you're looking at 25% gains. That's not bad, not bad of a trade, right? And again, back to the daily, look at this MACD. The only thing that I don't like is that we didn't fully reset here on the RSI, fully come down and touch, at least get into oversold territory. All right, so that's my take on Bitcoin. Let's get into today's coin. Today's coin is all about CFX. Let's go take a look at what cfx is up to what is cfx let's go check it out on the website on coin gecko let's do a quick search cfx Oops. cfx ranked 73 let's take a look at some of these statistics obviously the statistics matter the market cap all of that good stuff the whole narrative is cfx part of a hot narrative yes it is guys if you'll appreciate any of the content that i offer you here on the channel do the channel a massive favor and slap that like button it does really help out with the algorithm feel free to join those socials the links are in the description including the telegram group guys i'm live at 7 30 eastern talking about crypto news and price action so feel free to join all right let's take a look here and a, a bit of detail you know market cap wise and fully diluted there's nothing that's interesting i'm wondering why circulating supply 2 billion units out of the 5.2 billion units of total supply there is no max supply listed just yet 
you know, a lot of people call this the Ethereum out of China, the Chinese Ethereum. Now, it could be very possible. Now, we know that Ethereum doesn't have a max supply. It's infinite. Now, this could be the case as well for CFX. Obviously, a little bit more depth in, in research on the white papers would obviously benefit. But here on the channel, we focus mostly, mostly on price action, a bit of fundamentals, a bit of, you know, a little bit of the tokenomics. And for me, that's enough. Now, if you're a purely on a fundamental trader, it's really important that you get fundamentally bullish, guys. Do your fundamental research. It's very, very beneficial to be bullish in that perspective, especially on red days when you're expected to buy the dip on these assets. You think about it, okay? So at the end of the day, we have half, approximately half, maybe more than half, still not in circulation, which leads me to believe that there's gonna be some sort of mechanism, some sort of way could be, um, some sort of uh, unlock periods that could be releasing tokens to uh, the market, whether it be through fees or you know gas or you know mining. Uh, I, again, it's quite important to realize the schedule and the mechanism behind releasing these tokens. Because as there is tokens to be released, you'll expect that the price will have you know, a negative pressure. There will be negative pressure on the price as long as tokens are being released to the market. The good news is if the project is bullish and there's the ecosystem is growing and the dApps are being developed, those tokens are going to be eaten up so quick and consumed by the market that the price will still go up regardless of the tokens being entered into the market. And that's what we're seeing at the, at the moment. Very strong bullish momentum to the upside. Supply, circulating supply is still not fully diluted. However, because there's bullishness, it doesn't matter. We're seeing growth in the price. The price is going up. Market cap is under a billion dollars, 665 million. So there is still some growth there if we're going to compare it to Ethereum. And based on the Asia narrative or the Chinese narrative, we know that Hong Kong is going to be going very pro uh, cryptocurrency very soon, which means that we should see some good positive price action here. And we should see the circulating supply or the market cap rise based on adoption and price, right? Um, and supply and demand, obviously. Where can you get this token? Maxi, Binance, Gate, BitGet, all the major players. You can find it pretty much anywhere. Um, and let's go check out that website. Let's see what's up. What's up with CFX? Obviously, they have a link to the white papers. Go check that out. So a blockchain without bar barriers. Conflux enables creators, communities, markets to connect across borders and protocols. High throughput, secure, interoperable, scalable, built-in staking, low fees. You know, as a layer one, this is it. This is what you're getting. Uh, a competitor to ETH, the CFX token economy is built around the CFX token, a unit of value in the platform enables token holders to pay transaction fees. So gas earn rewards through staking, rent storage and participate in network governance. So like a DAO, CFX also incentivize reward miner, miner. So it's a mining. So tokens get released uh, to the public through mining who ensures secure operation of the network. Very similar to way Ethereum works. Okay. So I'm wondering if this is proof of work and proof or proof of stake. If it's like Ethereum, it will be proof of stake okay so something to consider okay um and um yeah mining for ethereum right now is pretty much non-existent but not, you know you got to really think about the fact that transactions are the transaction fees are still very very um uh, high okay so let's move on let's move on what do we see here what does our ecosystem look like Ecosystem, we have a few uh, ones that I can, Injective is part of there. Um, we have PancakeSwap, of course. We have a, a lot of the decentralized exchanges are definitely partners because they host the ability to buy the token. Okay, so we're looking at DeFi platforms. We're looking at, um, what else do we have? Ex exchanges and wallets. Of course, all of these exchanges uh, and wallets are going to be... Um, supporting developer what do we have any known projects not really not re ipfs okay that's a standard that's a protocol of course uh infrastructure so it's up and coming there's still some chain link obviously uses chain link fetch ai um api 13 ap 13 uh what else yeah okay so it's just growing nfts what do they got going on here nothing too too mainstream so you can see there's still a lot here uh to 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 grow okay it's still a lot of room to grow um uh, the, the development needs to the ecosystem has to keep on building but there's still quite a bit here 
there's still quite a bit here that definitely can give us a little bit of a, a starting point okay so something to consider of course uh check out the com news feeds there's community tabs there's a lot happening here go check that out and do your research okay guys now let's get take a look at the chart what is the this cfx chart look like you know the channel really does you know focus on dips it focuses on retracements and potentially finding areas where you can find those support and really you know these green arrows that i put in on a daily basis and the red arrows to take profits guys they do work out most often than not right so let's take a look at what happened upon this rally i did mention that i wanted to buy the dip i wasn't going to be buying into green candles and i've been very patient now unfortunately i should have went in a lot earlier but i didn't and i know a lot of people are in the same boat with many other projects not just cfx but you can see that cfx did rally up and because of that rally uh, we, a lot of people made some gains and we were able to identify a great place to take profits which was at about 45 cents you can go check out my previous videos we covered Cover a lot of projects on a daily basis and we did talk about cfx at one point i just don't know remember when a while back prior to this little dip that we were seeing where is it somewhere around here go check it out scroll around make yourself at home there's lots of projects lots of ta lots of setups that i talk about on a daily basis uh so that's very important that we stay one step ahead of the market okay so uh back to the chart now you can see that once we got into this scenario where we saw this bearish divergence right around here i I saw that the market was really too hot and then this confirmation low on the rsi confirmation high on the rsi with the follow through here led me to believe like you know what it's time to really really take profits on this third drive of bearish divergence we got three waves up and then right here on the third drive this bearish divergence was like okay time to take some profits and de-risk now we got that follow through we got the follow through based on the bearish divergence we almost fully reset now remember when bullish projects are super bullish we don't necessarily have to do a a full reset and this is why i always promote dc ing right now based on my strategy i wait for the momentum oscillators to bottom out now right now it didn't bottom out it didn't so, but we did see that the macd kind of kind of did bottom out and we got bullish divergence on the macd and i'll show you what i mean right we see that the macd is upward sloping on these two clusters while the uh, the price action is coming down now the our side did not give us that signal unfortunately did not give us that signal here on the daily however we did hit the bottom of the volume gap pretty accurately like pretty we just wicked down for a little bit and we hit the bottom of that volume gap this is a reaction of a reaction based on liquidity we fell through the liquidity gap we fell through the bottom of the gap we got some support and bounced we are currently trying to break structure you can see that we're trying to make a higher high here right the local high just meaning this high right here now what happens is is that if we end up breaking structure it's an extra confirmation for the bulls that we're going to higher levels you should see some increases in volume some more interest in in this chart as we break above and just by looking at it right now you can probably see the beginning of a potential inverse head and shoulder being formed because of this okay so let's continue with the story you can see that we are in a bit of a trend to the downside now i'll put a trend line in just to you know entertain the idea that we are slightly downwards trending currently okay let's include some wicks okay and do one of these okay just to highlight that fact now as soon as we break structure we kind of did break trend even if you wanted to be a little bit more you know adamant about getting touches you can do something like this okay we broke a little bit of a trend you gotta admit and we're now what we're trying to do is break structure now if we get rejected here okay and we'll get into lower time frames to see if that possibility but if we get rejected and we eventually roll over the last line of support would be at about 27 cents previous lows okay and that would give us that inverse potential inverse head and shoulder pattern which would be that follow through price action the only problem that i have with looking at it that way is that i'm not getting signs of bullish divergence based on these two bottoms on the rsi i am getting them on the macd we are getting them on the macd so it's not bad of a scenario okay now upon the back test if we create a higher low and get a confirmation of a higher low based on this potential pivot point it's a good time to potentially buy the dip and go into long positions here okay based on the getting support on the top of the volume gap as we did in the past okay so that's something important to consider now from a bullish perspective this could be that pattern this could be the actual pattern that we're expecting to break because a measured move of a pattern like this 
okay? Um, if we do get this inverse head and shoulder type of formation, would take us right back to the top level, okay? Retesting these previous highs. And again, de-risking at this zone is very, very healthy, okay? Very healthy, considering the fact that, you know, a lot of people didn't take profits at this zone that would be interested in doing that right now. But just remember that this Asia narrative is really, really hot. And right now, CFX as being the next Ethereum out of China and the um, CFX being very tied up with the uh, Chinese government and getting um, a lot of, um, I think it's regulated and accepted by the Chinese government. Uh, not regulated, but accepted and got um, yeah, basically permission. It is, it, 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 it's got the green light right to operate which is a good thing right so in this case we could get back to these levels once again and expect a little bit of a reaction for those in the, from those individuals that didn't take profits up the up at the top right so remember that this whole narrative regarding the chinese market is going to open up on a june 1st but at the end of the day we know that a lot of the people out in asia that weren't allowed to to get into cryptocurrency in the past were doing it anyway so are we going to get a bullish reaction based on that it could be, but that could be just a buy the rumor, sell a news event. So we just got to be very careful here with expecting to hold this for way too long uh, or at least have the expectation that if we do get a further retracement to the downside, that you're willing to hold for at least a year to two years. OK, let the bull run come. And I'm sure Conflux will be doing well. OK, so this is the thing. Now, is this enough of a retracement? We've hit that golden pocket 618 right now, very confident with the volume gap. And we got support. We got a bounce. Now we're, we could potentially get rejected as a dead cat bounce and hopefully get support at 27 cents. Right now, if we don't, how low could we go? OK, let's get into a bearish stance because this is looking a little bullish right now. Breaking structure, breaking trend. And at the end of the day, the RSI looking like it wants to trek back up to the upside, but without a full reset of the RSI, it leads me to believe that there's still a little bit of risk left, you know, in it that we could come back down and fully reset on this RSI and then finally get a nice bounce to the upside. So two buy orders here or one big one, one nice buy order would have been healthy right now. You would have been in profits. What kind of profits? Let's be modest and take the middle of these two green arrows and say more or less you're up 28% um for uh, pretty much at the tops and currently at this current price about 20 percent great opportunity great gains 20 percent with no leverage is decent now let's get into lower time frames and then we'll come back to the daily to bring this whole analysis full circle now on the daily um what do we got here on the rsi what do we got here on price action we're getting a bit of a rejection um upon entry or maybe touching these previous highs you can see that we have a bit of a gap that got reacted but well, we basically reacted on that gap okay i didn't highlight it in the past but you can see we do have one and there's always reactions on liquidity and we're get we got that reaction we got that pullback now could we get reactions based on this liquidity it's possible. Now you can see that this price action right here at the bottom did kind of fill up the VPVR. It filled up the weak spot. The, the gaps I identify as a weak spot. And as price action enters those weak spots and consolidates, it does fill it up, making it not so weak as it was before. But nonetheless, you can see that there's a gap. So let's understand that if we do come down below that 27 cent zone, we could actually fall right through it again. It happens all the time. It's very, very possible and giving us that opportunity. But don't forget that we could get that reaction at the top of the volume gap once again, giving us that inverse head and shoulder. Now, on the daily time frame, we can see that the price action is was going upwards completely. There is a, two spikes to the upside right here. Let's zoom in just a bit more. OK, two spikes to the upside while the RSI is downward sloping. That's class A bearish divergence on these two touches. Three touches could be a third drive to the upside, come back up, touch this trend line, and still see the RSI trekking to the downside. Okay, that would be a triple drive up and triple drive down based on the RSI momentum, meaning that eventually we should get some follow through and come down to lower levels. Again, maybe getting that support at about 27 cents. Now let's zoom in on this MACD, on this RSI. You can see that we got the bearish divergence, follow through could come down and fully reset like we have done in the past. One, two, three, and let's compare it to one, two, three, which is here, here, and where else did I say three? Maybe here, okay, whatever down every time we fully reset pretty much on the other side we did get a reaction even if it was counter trend we did get a reaction pump up 
pump up okay now if we do fully reset where wherever it is could we get that pump up now if we reset and we've hit that 27 cents the pump up will be really good because it's really close to the consolidation area which is right around this zone okay so let's consider the fact that we could roll over come down down to these levels get this four hour fully reset because right now we're definitely overbought at extreme levels we can see that and getting a little bit of a rejection and based on this gap it could get resistance come back down and buy the dip at about 27 cents that's what i'm interested in now let's look at the macd quick is it giving us confluence ema is having crossed yet but it's definitely looking for it we got pale green histogram bars the beginning of a potential dip but overall, the momentum is trekking to the upside. It's giving me that sense of upwards momentum, upwards shifting. And if I put another trend line on these tops, you can see what I mean. We're slowly shifting to the upside, shimmering upwards, upwards. So leading me to believe that this is what we're seeing is the shift slightly up. Now a pullback and then a continuation, inverse head and shoulders, break of the neckline, which again is at about 33 cents. So now we're going to start looking at potential breakouts the breakout would for me would be right around here this would be a nice breakout shoulder head shoulder if we can finally produce it i don't think this is the shoulder i think that this is equivalent to this right here we're going to probably get another shoulder to touch these bottoms and then finally come back up if it does happen but again and the only reservation based on my strategy is that there's no bearish divergent bullish divergence here none on the daily right that's what i really want this part of my my rules my conditions is that i see bullish divergence nothing here let's take the four day let's see nothing 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 no signs of bullish divergence just yet okay so that but there is on the macd okay so there is on the macd so overall again back back to the daily um if we do get rejected if we do reject it and get fully reset here on, we could have some bearish price targets again. That's why I have a spider line here at the 200 daily EMA at about 21 cents. Is it possible to finally break down, maybe continue to the downside based on the daily time frame? It is. It is because we didn't fully reset. Okay, we didn't reset. Uh, we're lucky that the MACD on the daily is still looking bullish. EMAs are facing up red histo uh, green histogram bars to the upside. Really looking good so far. So I don't want to get too bearish here. But at the end of the day, we have to anticipate the fact that we did not touch that 200 daily. And the 200 daily needs to be respected for us to get bullish again. The bulls wait for that 200 daily to get respected as confirmation, bounce off of it, and give us that indication that, yes, we're going to continue going up, and then you're going to see the bulls pile back in. In the meantime, you're going to see that it's going to act like a magnet. More often, often than not, it does act like a magnet, and the price tends to want to test that level. And that is why I have that spider line right there to give me a notification at the Fibonacci retracement, more or less the 786 is what I'm looking for. Now, slightly below it, we do have a little bit of a gap that you can see that there's an indentation on the price here on the VPBR where we do not have much supply and demand. Straight up, straight down, straight up. That means no supply and demand, no price action there at the 886, okay, which for me at the end of the day is a nice deep retracement. So overall i'm looking for retracements because i'm bullish and i want to buy the dip but the biggest cue for me would be around this zone i think the 18 cents between the this area right here is where i would go absolutely heavy and of course upon confirmation and fully reset of the rsi if we do not get reset on the rsi on the daily and get into oversold territory meaning down here guys i'm not going to get into any fresh uh, longs because it, it's very right now we're in chop zone pretty much we're in the middle of the rsi neither the bulls or basically neither the um usdt price or the cfx price is showing dominance it's relative strength index so which one with uh, based on this trading pair which one is showing strength none currently at the moment right we're stagnant right in the middle middle on the daily and you can see that right here we're getting into a very choppy zone to the point that we need a bit of a battle between the two before we get that confirmation okay so what i'm saying here is be prepared to buy the dip this is not a bad time to start dcing especially upon this confirmation at 27 cents i'm going to reuse this arrow and bring it there and then again, another buy the dip right around this area is not bad. I'm going to be very modest and just kind of put it down here. But you know that 200 daily and this volume gap could act as support. Maybe we wick down to this level and hit the zone, start W out, and then off to the races we go. But again, guys, again, 
nobody has a crystal ball nobody knows exactly what's going to happen here we could come down even lower just prepare just prepare that if you get your hands wet your hands dirty with cfx at this level and we happen to fall you almost have no choice but to buy the dip at lower levels so that you can drag your average cost down obviously you can cut your losses and put a stop a stop loss right but if you're on spot maybe just dcaing at lower levels and accumulating more at lower levels is the best strategy all right guys thank you for stopping by if you haven't yet show the support by slapping that like button it does really help out with the algorithm if i've offered you any value feel free to follow me on those socials the links are in the description below including the telegram group if you have any projects that you want me to cover on the channel feel free to join me live at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action guys feel free to join that telegram group i definitely want to get going there i want to get some good individuals that have you know trade setups that are Want to tr that want to trade as a community it's a great way to learn off one another so feel free to join take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip